Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about measures of central tendency. I'll try to keep it brief as this is one topic most students are already familiar with. Measures of central tendency summarize a single variable in terms of one value that represents the distribution in some way. Depending on the measurement level of the data, its distribution, and your goal, one of the three primary measures may be more valuable than the others. The most widely recognized but least flexible of these three is the mean, or the arithmetic average. When non-mathematicians say average, this is generally what they mean. It's simply the sum of values divided by the number of values. Sometimes it's represented by the Greek letter mu, which looks like a u with a tail on the left end. The mean is useful for continuous variables, and continuous like ordinal variables, when distributions are fairly evenly dispersed without outliers. It's the only measure of central tendency that takes the value of every case into account directly. However, it's not useful for nominal or categorical variables because you can't combine categories. The only exception is for binary variables, where it can be interpreted if the variable is coded 0, 1 as the proportion of cases with a value of 1. The other drawback to using the mean is that because it uses every value, it's easily influenced by outliers. Consider 10 people who earn annual incomes of $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 on up to $100,000. The mean income would be $55,000. However, if the highest value instead of $100,000 is $100 million, the mean income now is over $10 million. Now it's hard to argue that $10 million is representative of the income of that entire group. Luckily, there are two good alternatives. For ordinal or interval variables, the median finds the middle value instead of the average, while the mode finds the most common value for any type of variable. Both have the advantage of being constrained to values actually found in the data, except for an occasional median, which will be halfway between two central scores. To find the median, arrange the cases in order from smallest to largest. If there are an odd number of cases, the middle value, so the n minus one over second case, is the median. If there are an even number of cases and the two central values are different, the median is the mean or midpoint of the two. If you're using a computer, the median is also the 50th percentile. Medians are often used for things like household income or time to complete an exercise because they're less affected by individual outliers. So in the example above, the median and mean would be identical in the uniform distribution but the median remains stable even when an extreme value is introduced. The mode is the only measure of ten central tendency suited to nominal data, but it can also be useful for ordinal or interval data at times. To calculate the mode, create a frequency table. The most frequent value, or values in the case of a tie, is the mode. You may hear the terms bimodal or multimodal to refer to distributions with multiple equally frequent values or multiple peaks in the case of ordinal or interval level data. Like medians, modes are robust to the presence of outliers, because those outliers won't be the most common case, but they contain no information about ordering in ordinal or interval variables. The measure of central tendency will refer to most this semester as the mean, but not necessarily because it reflects the distribution better, but instead because means can be compared and or used in statistical tests quite easily. But all three are important to know and distinguish. Thanks for watching. See you soon.